Okay, folks, I've gotten a lot of requests in the recent weeks about a process that I use when I'm finishing my uh, works or I've come to an end. And it's uh, something I keep mentioning about cold wax. Cold wax is something I apply at the very end of my uh, art making process. But before I do that, I think I've showed you all a video where, since my medium is oil bars and oil pastels, I am using a uh, fixative produced by Sunalia, which is excellent. It's probably the best fixative I've found that works on uh, oil pastel. And what I do is, uh, and I will put a link to all these supplies today that I talk about below. And... Uh, what I do is apply that spray fixative in four directions, a very light coat. So I will put that up, let it dry each coat about 10 minutes, and spray four directions. And once that is, this has been dry for about a week now, so that's fine. And this surface, I feel no tackiness or pull from the uh, mixed medium I'm using here, the grease pencils, the oil pastel, the oil bars, the uh, drying medium, blending medium I use. So everything is pretty much sealed. But I want to seal it even further and unify the color and sheen on here. So what I'll use is a cold wax, which is produced by Gamblin, called cold wax medium. And we'll open this up in a second. But what I do before I apply the cold wax is uh, I turn the canvas over, as you see here, and I spray the back with a light mist. And this is water. And then it's just a basic water bottle here. So I spray this, not, not crazy, not to soak it, just enough so it gets a little damp. And then I just tap the canvas so there's no water bubbles anywhere, shake the canvas. And what that does is tighten this like a drum. And I want it very taut so it pushes back. And that is tightened considerably from what it was just a couple seconds ago. So I'm going to put that down here. And uh, I open up this can. And show you what we have in here. And this is what it looks like. It's a, a waxy medium. And in that medium, I think there is a little bit of linseed oil. Um, and then there's instructions on the side how to apply it. Uh, it's a product that contains petroleum distillate. So I'm wearing gloves for that. So what I'll do is take a little dab. And I don't know how many of you out there are watching this uh, uh, video, but there was a great phrase of the uh, late 50s, mid 50s to the 60s that uh, went like this. It was in common culture and it was a little dab will do you. So the point is uh, just use a little bit of this. And I'll put a link below where that phrase, a little dab will do you, came from. And if you all know what I'm referring to, go ahead and put it down in your comments below. So that's how much I have on the end of my finger. And I am just going to put it on the painting in circular motion. And I'm trying to rub it out so it's pretty smooth, get an even coat across the whole surface and just keep doing this till you have it covered It has a nice smell to it. 
God knows really what's in here. And I will do this on bigger pieces of work, but you have to be careful how big you get. You know, on a canvas, I think you're okay within four to five feet uh, perimeter size, but a canvas is flexible and this hardens up as wax. It could crack, it could show cracks in cold weather. So once you get up above four to five feet, you probably want to be on a hard surface like a painting that's on a cradled uh, wooden frame and that painting is on an actual uh, archival piece of wood and uh, I have done these up to that size and they hold very well of course these cannot be in direct sunlight where they're getting summer light shining on it all day long because it, it could soften the wax but you notice nothing is blending and that means what I did to the base with this fixative secured it so well that it's protected from this coating on top. So this coating on top will just rest on the top. So that that was an important part of the procedure. And don't be um, scared because you see it getting dull or anything. That's okay. And I'm just trying to get out parts of this that look a little uneven where there might be a glob of wax. So this is pretty good. This is covered now. What I'm going to do is just leave this for maybe an hour or so and let it harden up maybe more maybe three four hours and then I'm gonna come back and show you the next process to bring this up to its final sheen what will be what will look like a nice matte varnish a beautiful matte sheen that unifies all the colors and makes this very cohesive Okay, so, and then you always want to get your lid back on this so this always stays moist and doesn't dry up and harden like a rock, and uh, that's real important as well. So, please come back and I will uh, show you how I'll wrap this up. Thank you. Okay, folks, now we're ready to uh, bring this coal wax to a nice sheen. You can... Uh, you know, bring it to any kind of sheen you like. You can make it a little more glossy. You can make it more on the matte varnish side. And I spray the back of this again just to keep it tight. And um, it depends on you what kind of finish you like in the end. And it looks like I didn't time this video properly with the sun coming through the studio. So you're going to get sunlight come across the top of this but I use an old sock as I'm trimming here wait use an old sock and I take off these little doodads from the sock I didn't want those Maybe I won't. No, I'll just do it this way. So I ball it up pretty much like I'm polishing a pair of shoes. And uh, you can use a t-shirt as well, a nice cotton t-shirt. And this is at the texture I want right now. It's a little tacky but not bone dry so I can get a nice finish on here. And I'll just start working in a circular motion. And it's going to take a bit of a time. But I'm going to show you at least the beginning of the process. And 
the goal is to get off that top surface and get it down to a nice polishable wax. So you see the process here and I can start to see a subtle sheen get worked up. And what's good is no color is coming off on that uh, rag because everything is sealed. And it's starting to feel smooth and less tacky. But there is a nice coat of wax on it, which will be my protective coat. And you will know, you'll just keep doing this till you can just take your hand and not feel any stickiness. And then that's when you'll know you're done. You want this to be a smooth surface. So what I'm going to do, I have that taken up, but now I just want a little bit of a different type of material. And actually this is better than that sock I had, I should have known that. And this is just a pure cotton, and I ball that up. And now I can go a little harder. See, that's a, this is a better material. So this will take me about another five to eight minutes just doing this lightly. Yeah. And you can see the wax starting to come up, build up on the cloth. But I'm not picking up any color, which is great. And what you can do is I hit this uh, rag with a little bit of water. Just like the uh, shoe polish, just to get a spit shine. And that little bit of water doesn't affect the surface, but helps with the abrasion and getting a little more shine out of here. So this is really hard to see on the video what the surface looks like in the texture, but it's really nice it's coming together it's getting smoother and it needs to dry I'll let it dry a little more but the coverage is great the protections great and that's gonna last a few hundred years maybe a thousand so I don't want to video this whole process because I'm still gonna do this for a few more minutes but I just want to recap what I showed you. So the process again is once you finish your mixed media work that's uh, comprised, say, of oil pastel, oil bars, grease pencil, china markers, any kind of multimedia marker. Even below here, there is uh, acrylic paint way down at the base layer. Uh, once all that's applied, you want to apply a very good fixative for all this mixed media, which once again is made by Senelier, for oil pastels. So you want to do this process first. Once that's dry, then you can start to apply the cold wax. And where is that can? This is the Gamblin cold wax medium. And you want to apply it like I showed you earlier in the video. And then you want to start to take it off gradually till you get a nice 
matte sheen and a nice thin co protective coating and this is about the best I can find the other thing I've gotten a lot of questions about people want to know they see my hand going to a tub of uh, medium so while I'm actually working even before I'm finished people want to know how I'm blending my colors or what I'm adding to my color well I'm using this medium it's uh, produced by R&F handmade paints it's a blending medium with a dryer so I'm dipping into this and rubbing into my colors as you see in some of my uh, earlier videos and this is really a game changer it extends the life of the oil pastel it extends the life of the oil bar plus it has an added quick dryer in it so it allows me to work up layers with a nice degree of tackiness to add new color new luminosity and you know this is every day this is as important to me as uh, a cup of coffee and then uh, they make a smaller tube of that same medium it's called an RF blending stick with dryer so these are two things that are real vital if you want to go down this path with mixed media so I hope this was helpful in the next video I have in line is a lot of questions I'm getting on about my medium what I'm actually using what I'm using to get these blacks so I'm, um, what I'm using for the outline sometimes I don't have the outline and I will uh, put together a video of the actual color implements I'm using so I'm trying to think that out of my head now and see how it'll work out but I, I, you know you guys want it so I will definitely do it so here we here we go and I'm just doing this very lightly on top of the surface not bearing down much and this is going to look great all right i hope this was informative put your questions below and i'll try to answer them all and this is great the sun is coming into the studio isn't that great i love it okay take care